of my Savior, but serving Him has been such a thrill, and I've never seen the gates of that city, but one day, one day. Since the first day I met him, he has been all to me, and my life with joy he has filled, and I long for the day when I shall behold him, and one day, one day. So many love 
loved ones have reached heaven's shore. Oh, yeah. And so often with them I long to be. Yeah. But God's word he promised one day we'll meet again. Oh, yeah. And one day, oh, one day. Praise the Lord. Look at one verse here tonight. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 20. Hebrews 11, verse 20. Everybody there? Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 20 says, By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. You're going to see tonight the blessing with Jacob and Esau. Jacob received also the spiritual blessing where Esau uh, did not. Amen. And we'll be looking at some of that tonight and pray this study will be a help. And with faith in the family. And regardless, I, I brought out the fleshly side of Isaac and this as the unspiritual father, but yet they were God's men. Because when God mentions all the way through the Old Testament, he'll always say it like this. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Regardless of all our faults and our flaws and our coming up short of the glory of God, amen, the Lord makes the difference in our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for the reading of thy word. We thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for our training union this afternoon and the discussions, Lord, and the things we learned there. I pray you'll help us now as we look more into the word of God here and, Father, be a help blessing to others that have come this way tonight. We thank you for our church, and we do pray for our nation. Remember all these names that we mentioned, Father, the one that has death in the family, Father. And also, Father, Lord, uh, do remember, Lord, that we forgot uh, 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 Jill's uh, uh, grandpa, Lord. Do remember him, Father, Lord, uh, and help that family there, Lord. And, Father, and I pray, Father, for others in our church that have been sick, those that weren't here this morning, uh, still not here tonight, that are sick. Pray you might touch them, Heavenly Father, Lord God. Now, Bless in our Hebrew study tonight. Maybe there's one here tonight that doesn't know Christ as our Savior, Lord. He'll come know Jesus. Of course, they're everlasting too late, Father, Lord. Help us get closer to you through your precious word. We'll thank you, love you, and praise you, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for sake we pray. Amen. You can all be seated. We've been dealing with faith in the family. And Genesis 27 gives the account of the family of Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Esau. Amen. Are all recorded over in Genesis chapter 27. And we were talking at the beginning when we started this series on the unspiritual father. And we looked at Isaac's life and Isaac's uh, concerns and uh, how Isaac's 137 and he thinks that he's dying because uh, Ishmael died at the age of 137, his half-brother. And uh, he thinks he's going into eternity and he wants the, the venison that he loves. Uh, he shows the fleshly side of the man, the venison. He's dying and he's... Talking about something to eat, venison. and uh, But yet he lives to be another 43 years old, and he finally dies at the age of 180. Amen. That's the age Isaac died according to uh, Genesis 35 and verse number 28. And uh, so we were looking at the unspiritual father and how this deals with the home. And the home goes to children. Home goes to children. It all starts at home. It ain't through the public school system. It ain't through the church. Thank God for the church, amen. They can hear the truth, amen. But it starts in the home, being raised right in the home, amen. Whatever we learn at home, 
that affects us in our life. Amen. And we've been looking at Isaac's concern when he was dying. And then we looked at Isaac's carnality, amen, and it is seen, amen, in trying to do something fleshly to get a spiritual gain, and it will not work like that. And then we went over to the unsurrendered wife. We have the unspiritual father. Then we go, went over to the unsurrendered wife. If you got an unspiritual father and you got an unsurrendered wife, you got a homeless in a mess, amen, it's going to have problems, amen. Because it's not the kind of home God wants, amen. God wants everything in order as he put it in the scriptures, amen. That's the way he wants the home to flow. And if it's in it, hey, it goes along uh, with scripture like God put it in there, you'll have a great home. You'll have a great home. You won't dread going to that. I can see myself preaching here and saying, well, you know, I don't want to go home because of my wife. Are you kidding me, amen? If I can't go home because of my wife, dear God, I ain't got no business preaching in the pulpit, amen. Amen. Mercy. God help us. Amen. So we've got an unspiritual father. We've got an unsurrendered wife. And she went behind his back. And she'd done some things that were not right. Amen. And simply because maybe the love had died down where he replaced his love for her with venison, something to eat. Amen. And But she could have learned a lot of things from her mother-in-law. Amen. Uh, but we know that Sarah died. Amen. But Sarah would have been her mother-in-law. So we see the unsurrendered wife. But we see the unspiritual father. And we talked about the unsurrendered wife and the decision that she made to do what she done to deceive her husband and how they played favorites. Isaac's favorite was Esau. Maybe there's something in Esau's life that Isaac saw that took him back to his younger days. Oh, boy, he's a hunter. He's a hunter. No doubt, buddy, listen to me. He's probably toned and everything else doing the things that he done. And probably Isaac remembered a better day when he was like, I remember many a time, see, I didn't ever get to play football in college. I just played some in high school. But I watched my son got to play in college. And you're watching him play, and it kind of does something for you when you're the daddy. But listen, playing football is one thing. Standing up here singing is something totally different, amen. 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 <laughs> Playing football ain't got no rewards there, but be God, you do something for Jesus Christ, it's got a reward to it, amen. But we find maybe he's seen some things in his son, amen, but that was his pick. And Rebecca's uh, pick, we talked about that last week, uh, no doubt was uh, Jacob. And we saw her decision that she made, and we seen the deceit that she went through. But then we talked about the conception, when she conceived these boys, how it was a struggle within her womb. And how that when we get saved, we are in a struggle. When we got saved by the grace of God, we joined the struggling crew. It's a struggle. Amen. There's a struggle on the inside. Amen. The good against the bad. Amen. Holy Spirit has renewed our spirit. Amen. He is good. Amen. Then there's an old fleshly man. Amen. That old man that's down in there, that old Esau, he's down in us. Amen. He represents the fleshly man. And he's always going against the one that is spiritual. Amen. So we've seen her conception. And it was a struggle going on. We talked about how that represents our two natures. And then we've seen the conflict how the brothers developed Esau was a man of the field Jacob was a man of the fold and how Esau was a follower of Cain Jacob follower of Abel and Esau's passion was to kill and but we see how Jacob's passion was to project things amen and so we see how they differed now the night we're gonna go to the third thing now we've seen the unspiritual father we've seen the unsurrendered wife now, number three, we want to look at the unscrupulous brother. The unscrupulous brother. The word unscrupulous means this. Regarding no principles in his life. Regarding no principles in his life. And we start tonight dealing with Jacob. Now, Jacob, in his own devious way, had a desire for what God could do for him. But yet we find in the Word of God he goes about it so many times the wrong way. He wanted God's blessing. Well, God, he would have got it. He, would, he didn't have to connive with his mama. He didn't have to bring conceit with his mama to try to get God's will done. You know, so many times that can happen in a church. You can connive and conceit. The preacher comes and he says, well, I tell you what, 
I don't know what church is going to pay me, but I'm going to fix the word. They're going to pay me, right? And he don't let God take care of him. He takes care of himself. You'll get in trouble like that. You'll get in trouble like that. What you got to do is, I never forget when I, when they voted me in this church, Johnny Neal come right out there and told me, he said, well, preach, I reckon we better talk about what we're going to pay. We need to talk about that money. I said, whatever y'all give me, I'll take it. Amen. Amen. Because there comes a time in your life you got to learn you ain't got to worry about taking care of yourself. God will take care of you. Sure he will. God will take care of you if you let him. Amen. And there's something. But Jacob thought he had to help God out. We've all done that before. He wanted God's blessing, but he was overly scrupulous about how he obtained it. Now, if you'll read Genesis 27, you read verses 11 down to verses 27. We're not read all those verses tonight because we want to get both of these brothers tonight. We are told in those verses of Jacob's scheming behavior. His scheming behavior. Now, the one thing that stands out in Jacob is falsehood. Falsehood. Young folks, whatever many that we got here tonight, You'll never get anywhere in this life trying to connive your way and lie your way through. You won't get nowhere like that. The one thing that stands out in Jacob is falsehood. Now, y'all remember how the story goes. If you don't, let me refresh your memory. He dressed up to make himself look like Esau, feel like Esau. He dressed up in like Esau's clothes. He put goat's hair on his arm. Because Esau was a hairy man. He put goat's hair on his arms, and a dish of goat is what his mother fixed. And Jacob set out to deceive Isaac, his father. Now, when Isaac asked who it was, now look how Jacob replies there in Genesis 27 and verses number 19. He says, I'm Esau. Lie number one. Lie number two, thy firstborn. That's a lie. I have done according as thou badest me. Lie number three. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat my venison. Lie number four. That thy soul may bless me. Jacob gave his father four lies in one breath. Huh? <laughs> he gave him four lies now in one breath. Jacob did. Now, yet, you read in the scriptures, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we all, in this walk of life, God can take even those that are connivers and deceivers and make something out of them, buddy. Amen, connivers and deceivers. He, four, he has four lies in a single breath. Now, Isaac distrusted his hearing, and he followed his feeling and gave the blessing to Jacob. He said, thou, you feel like Esau, but you have the voice of Jacob. But he wouldn't accept his senses with his hearing, and he didn't even trust that. And he passed the blessing on to Jacob. Now, Jacob's going to get the blessing. Now, keep in mind, Esau's done sold his birthright. to be one profane person like Esau. You have Bible said he sold his birthright for one morsel of bread. Now, keep in mind, he's already got the birthright. Now, he gets the blessing. He gets the blessing. Now, Isaac distrusted his hearing. He wouldn't even trust that. He gives the blessing to Jacob. So we see Jacob's scheming behavior. Now, where did Jacob learn scheming at? He learned it somewhere in the house. He learned it somewhere at the house. He learned how to scheme. Amen. Our kids pick up on what we do. Jacob's scheming behavior. But number two, we see Jacob's stolen blessing. The stolen blessing. Let me read it, amen. Praise God over here in Genesis chapter number 27. I'm going to read verses 28 down to verses 33. Genesis 27. Genesis 27, 
verses 28 down to verses 33. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. Let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee. And blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. And Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also had made savory meat, brought it to his father, said to his father, let my father arise and eat his son's venison that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, he shall be blessed. Yea, he shall be blessed. So we see Jacob's scheming behavior. Now let's look at Jacob's stolen blessing. What was this blessing? What is the contents of the blessing? What is it Jacob got? Three things. Three things in the blessing. Number one, he had the right to the family property. That's part of the blessing. He had the right to the family property. A double portion went to the firstborn. That's why when the prodigal left and he went to the far country, now keep this in mind, he didn't get what the elder brother got. The elder brother got a double portion, amen. The prodigal didn't, amen. So this is one part of the blessing. You get a double portion goes to the firstborn. So now Jacob has the right to the property, family property. Number two, here's the second thing about the blessing. He has the right to the family priesthood. The right to the family priesthood, the line of Christ. That's why you read it in the Bible. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Number three, not only this Jacob have the right to the family properly. Not only does he have the right of the family priesthood, but he has the right of the family. See if I wrote this down right. Pro, pro, progenitor. Am I saying it right? Progenitor. Okay, because I jot it here. Progenitor. Now that word. If you look it up in the dictionary, progeny means he's the offspring of his descendants. Progenitor means a forefather. So what it means is this. He has the sovereignty over the nation. The sovereignty over the nation. Now, with a sigh of relief, Jacob scurried right out of there, leaving Esau to think, amen, or leaving Isaac, I mean, to think that he had his way in giving the blessing to Esau. And then comes the shock that we just read. It is shocked Isaac that he realizes, now here is Esau. Now this was not just a physical trembling shock to Isaac, but an awakening from a spiritual stupor that he was in. What do you mean? He was made aware of what he had presumptuously tried to do. Yet he realized that God had overruled and had his way after all because he said this in verse 33. He said, yes, and he shall be blessed. Where did he get that from? Because God said that the older would serve the younger. Remember? The older would serve the younger. And whatever God says will happen. Amen. When God said in the Old Testament, he said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. When God said that there is a hell, there is a hell. 
When God said there is a bottomless pit, there is a bottomless pit. Now, how can God have a bottomless pit and we got a core called earth? Because when your soul falls into hell, now stay with me right here. When your soul falls, if you were dropped into the bottomless pit, if you were dropped into the bottomless pit, the way the earth spins at a thousand miles per hour before you could hit the bottom, your soul will start coming back up to the top. You constantly up and down like that. It has no ending. And God put a soul in there. You know what? A lot of people exit this life, taking their life, and thinking now it's over. No, it's just beginning. When you close your eyes in death, you go into eternity right then. There ain't no soul sleep. There ain't no priest coming to pray you out of purgatory because there ain't no purgatory. There's heaven and hell and nothing between it. Amen. And listen, when the rich man died, he opened up his eyes in hell. Hell ain't preached a whole lot anymore. Amen. But hell is still hell. Hell is still hell. Amen. Charles Spurgeon preached a message one time on the hell of hell. It's a real place, buddy. These people right there now crying out. But they can't get out. Amen. They'll spend, they'll spend their time there to the judgment, and they'll come out of hell and be cast into the lake of fire after they're judged, all because of simply unbelief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we find an unspiritual father, an unsurrendered wife, an unscrupulous brother, and finally, we meet Esau. Number four, the unsaved son. Over here in Genesis chapter number 27, verses 34 down to verses 46 of Genesis chapter 27. Verses 34 down to verses 46. You'll find the life of Esau. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. Verse 35, he said, Thy brother came with subtility and hath taken away thy blessing." He said, it is, not, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. He didn't take it from you, Esau. You gave it to him. Amen. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. He said, hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and his brethren have I given to him for servants. With corn and wine have I sustained him, and what shall I do now unto thee, my son? He says, What shall I do now unto thee, my son? Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also. O my father, and Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Crying don't get it done. Crying don't get it done. We first got saved and was Shiloh Baptist Church back in North Carolina. And I seen a woman said she came one Sunday and she got saved. And she went to a morning's business right here and she was kneeled down beside her. That woman, I lie not, she cried so much it was, it was wet where she cried at. She never came back to church. She never came back to church. Crying don't get it done. Repentance will. We want to bring the emotional part in and say, well, you know, hey, I tell you what now. Hey, emotions is one thing. Repentance is something else. Esau's crying his head off. He's crying, trying to get it done by crying. Crying ain't going to get it done, buddy. Crying won't get it done. He, the Bible constantly talks here how that he is crying, amen. And Isaac, verse 39, his father answered and said to him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by the sword shall thou live, shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion 
that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother. Jacob said, wait till, he, wait till my father's days are over. I'm going to kill Jacob. These words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. She sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, proposing to kill thee. And then, if you'll read all the way down to verse 46, you'll find that she sends him away to her family. Now, we see the unsaved son. Now, Esau had an unsaved man's view of eternal varieties. He thought that he could be bought, that they could be bought and sold to the highest bidder. You can't buy salvation. It ain't to be bid. It's by grace. It's not on a merit system. It's by the grace of God are ye saved. By God's mercy, amen, that God saved us, amen, that he had mercy on us to save us all, amen. Ain't no merit system. Money can't buy it, amen. Hey, listen to me. It's grace and grace alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not 99% Jesus, 100% Jesus, or no Jesus at all. Amen. amen. It ain't the good work thing. And Well, I came to church about... Five times while I was living, I should go to heaven, amen. No, uh-uh. No, you got to be born again. You got to be born again. Now, many think by preparing spiritual dishes of venison that they can earn God's blessing. By preparing his fleshly appetite, giving him what he wants to eat, you can get the spiritual blessing. You don't get the spiritual blessing through fleshly desires. Amen? You don't get the spiritual blessings through fleshly desires desires amen if i spend more time watching matt Dillon than i do studying i ain't gonna get nothing done amen, amen. you can't get no spirituality through physical things in this walk of life it don't it don't work like that bible says redeem the time use your time wisely let's look at the unsaved son and we're gonna close with him now the unsaved son verse 34 and verse 35, I just read that. Verse 34 and verse 35, you see Esau's remorse. His remorse. He cried for the blessing. He cried for it. He cried for the blessing, but he could not change his father's mind. He cried and he cried and he cried. Didn't change nothing. Too late to cry now, Esau. What's done is done. There's a lot of crying going on tonight. No doubt. Too late to cry now. When you go into eternity, it is too late. We see Esau's remorse. Verse 34, verse 35. Number two, we see Esau's resentment. His resentment in verse 36 and verse 37. Bitterness, not repentance. Repentance didn't fill Esau's heart. Bitterness did. Yet he had sold his birthright voluntarily. Y'all remember the story? He's about to starve to death and he wants something to eat. Amen. And old Jacob played right into his hands and said, give me, your, give me that birthright. Give me that birthright. I'll give you something to eat. He said, well, you can have it. What is that to me now? Amen. Now it's something Esau, but it's too late now. That's right. Amen. Amen. If you're ever in the service and the Holy Ghost of God gets a hold of you, you better move. You better move. Because that's him calling you to salvation. That's your time to move. You don't have to be progged and songs played and played and played. When the Holy Ghost of God draws you, you move. You move. And trust me, he's a whole lot powerful than I can holler. I may holler. I may get loud. But he's a whole lot powerful than I am. <laughs> Amen. So in verse 34, verse 35, we see Esau's remorse. Verse 36, verse 37, we see Esau's resentment. Verse 38 down to verse 40, we see Esau's request. His request. Isaac did bless him, but nothing eternal worth was behind it. He blessed him. 
but there was no eternal worth behind it. What good does it do to be blessed here if there ain't no eternal worth behind it? Why do you mean eternal worth? I'm talking about where you're going to live forever. Where are you going to live forever? <laughs> Esau's request, and Isaac did bless him, but it had no eternal worth behind it. We get down to verses 41, all the way down to verses 46 of Genesis chapter number 27. You go from his remorse to his resentment to his request, and then you come, you see Esau's resolve. We see his resolve. What could he not buy with meat? He sought to accomplish with murder. What he couldn't buy with meat, he was going he was going to get that blessing with that venison. What he couldn't buy with meat, we find he sought to accomplish with murder. He said, "I'm going to kill Jacob." He would murder Jacob to make up for what's happened here. If venison wouldn't do it, violence would. Venison wouldn't do it, violence would. What's going on in America right now? What has happened? Violence has hit it again. Turn it up, burning it down. Violence is hitting it again. That crowd gets saved, they won't be out there burning up buildings. Amen? They won't be trying to destroy property. They get the heart right with God. Amen? Amen? So what he, if venison wouldn't do it, violence would. So the sequel to the story is that God continues to work his will. And here is a very interesting point that we want to close with tonight. Let me say this. Right here in America as I speak, God is working his will. <laughs> God is working. They think they're outsmarting God. They think they've done things in this country for a year that God don't even know about it. Honey, God knows every bit of it. God knows every bit of it. Some of you would probably be shocked if you knew what has went on since the 60s. You'd probably be shocked. But if God wants you to know it, God will reveal it. But if God don't reveal it, God's got a plan. Amen. Now, we learned something very interesting in closing the night. That's a very interesting point here that God's going to leave us with. Now, God would not permit Jacob to have the possession until he acknowledged Esau as Lord. Look in Genesis 32. Look in Genesis 32. Now, this is after the dust has settled. Rebecca, she's done gone on to be with, be with her family. She's, uh, she's done passed on. And now he's coming back. Jacob's coming back. In Genesis 32, verse 4 and verse 5, he commanded them, now this is Jacob, and he commanded them saying, thus shall ye speak unto my what? Lord, Esau, thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. God would not permit Jacob to have the possession until he acknowledges Esau as Lord and renounce all claim to his evil bargain. It's over with now, amen. And what's done is done. It's time to put it in the past. Hey, listen to me. I have connived. I have schemed and everything else. He didn't have to do that because God had ways that he could do it. God don't need our help. We don't have to scheme and plan and do all that, amen. God is God and God's going to have his way has his way in the whirlwind sure it does and number two it became jacob's possession only as it came naturally and esau abandoned it look here in genesis 36 and we'll close with this verse right here genesis 36 6 let me show you where esau abandons everything here Genesis 36, 6. And Esau took his wives and his sons 
And his daughters, now keep in mind that he went to Ishmael's side. That's who he married in, into, Ishmael's side. All right? Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the possessions of his house and his cattle and all his beasts and all his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan, and he went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. He abandoned it all and walked away from it, amen, because why? Now it belongs to Jacob. He abandoned it all, turned his back and walked away from it. He done the Bible says, you read it. It says, he, hey, though he sought repentance, he sought it with tears, but he couldn't find it. He couldn't find it. Some people can send away their dead grace. God will deal with them. He'll deal with them. And they'll fight it. They'll try to hang on to the flesh. They'll listen to the devil. You don't need to do that. No, surely you don't want to do that. And the greatest thing you'll ever do is give your heart to Jesus. That's, but man, that rascal son, he sees the other side. He's done seen the other side. You ain't seen, hey, you ain't seen. Hey, listen, that night I had to step out by faith. That rascal was riding me down. He didn't want me to get saved. He's working on my back. I love to party. I love to go out and do my own thing. And here he's riding my back. He said, now, you know, if you do this here, uh, she ain't going to like it. She don't like it no way. She don't like to go to church. You don't need to do this and that. And I've been waiting to balance and God's convicted my heart. I rejected him one time earlier that night and told him, no, I wasn't ready yet. But yet he's binding me, trying trying to work on me and that I had to make a decision. I need Christ more than I need this life and Jesus saved my soul. And when he did, he changed me right then. Right then he changed me. Business picked up and things started getting better for me. Oh yeah, trouble came and trouble will came. Hey listen, and I started looking at my life and said I'm in a mess. I about gambled everything away. I about smoked everything away. I about drunk everything away. But God had mercy on me and he brought me along to where I am tonight. I give him the glory and praise. If it wasn't by his grace, I'd be in hell. Amen. Amen. Thank God for grace. But Esau turned his back and walked away from it. You don't walk away from God, buddy, because you'll meet him again one day. Hey, Amen. Don't, hey, listen, if you're here tonight, you're not safe. Don't turn your back on God. God deals with your heart. Don't you try to hang on to this flesh in this world because it ain't worth Your soul's not worth that. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? What does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Jesus Christ took your hell so you wouldn't have to go to hell. Amen. You die and go to hell, you go to hell in spite of everything Jesus ever did for you. But it don't have to be that way. Don't listen to the devil's bluff. Don't listen to why he puts it in you and said, no, you don't want that. You just hold on a little bit. Long. Wait, this service is over. You'll feel a whole lot better. Uh-uh. The best peace you'll ever have in your life, have that void filled, is when Jesus Christ comes to your heart. He'll fill that empty void, and you'll be satisfied. You'll be satisfied with you. Jesus said, taste me. See that I'm good. He's beautiful. Honey in the honeycomb is our Savior. And they're singing that song now, one day. One day I will. One day I'll meet the man that created the universe and took his fingers and he'll say, <laughs> stars are innumerable. Our mind can't even comprehend to count them. God named them. <laughs> Amen. But he said, but boy, when I redeem you, I need more than my fingers like I preached the other week. I had to use my arm. I used my arm to get you. But no doubt Jesus said we were worth it. We were worth it, amen. And one day you'll meet the man face to face. I had a dream one night. I know you don't go by your dreams. Then I got to heaven and there he was. Never seen his face, not in a dream. But I remember saying this, Bruce. I said, the man. <laughs> I said, you're the one that I always preached about. I said, every time I get up in the pool bit, I'd always say the man. And when I stood there, I looked up, I said, the man. The man, the human form, savior of the world. 
Amen. It bore my sins on the tree. Amen. 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 Took my sins away. Amen. Changed my nature. Amen. Gave me a good family. Saved my young ones. God. God is good. Jesus Christ. Amen. The man. Amen. One day I'll get to meet the man Amen. who died for me. Praise the Lord. What a day that'll be. That's going to be a great day right there. Amen. I get to meet the man. Praise God. Amen. Church, ain't you glad we got some hope? Amen. 